G'day and welcome to another Space Engineers tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a close look at gravity generators and gravity in general. Space Engineers has two different types of gravity, and if we go and look at our HUD, we can see those gravity values displayed on the right hand side of the centre portion of the HUD as A gravity and P gravity. These two types of gravity are artificial and planetary. Planetary gravity being anything from a moon or a planet. And artificial gravity being anything from a standard gravity generator or a spherical gravity generator. Gravity generators are pretty simple things. They have the size of the volume that they generate gravity for and they have the amount of gravity they generate. And that can be anywhere from 1G all the way to negative 1G. And those directions are relative to the position of the gravity generator with the bottom of it being the bit that's attached. It can be important to know the size of our gravity generator's field, not only because reducing the amount reduces the power, but also because there may be situations where you don't want overlap. For example, in a large station where you need to have multiple gravity generators, you may not want overlap. And that would mean any station larger than 150 meters in width, height, or other dimension. And the reason we don't want that is because multiple gravity generators have a summative effect on one another. So as you can see as I pull up to the talisman, its gravity generator will overlap with the one I've got on that station and will end up with two G's of acceleration downward rather than just one. Most situations that won't really matter. However, there will be times where you'll be docking a large ship to a station. And if the large ship has its gravity generators reaching out beyond its borders, then it may interact with the station's gravity field in a way that you don't expect, especially if it has unusually oriented gravity generators on board. So to avoid that, we're going to need to know how wide or how far our gravity generator's field is going to reach. And it's not going to be easy to tell that just from the distance from the gravity generator. So it'd be better if we can see that on our HUD and we can do that. As we can with sensors, we can show our gravity generator's field on our HUD. If we check that box, you'll see that nothing has shown up. And that's because we need to do one other thing. If we go into our control panel here and we go to our gravity generator, if we go to show on HUD, now we can see the field effect. And I've actually cut this off at an area where I specifically wanted to for the talisman. It cuts off just at the bottom of this ramp. It probably could use being lifted up a little bit to make it a bit more efficient. And on top, I've made it just above the roof line. So you'll see that we're in two G's here, but if I walk just outside, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's because out here, I'm being grabbed by the generator over on the yellow station there. Whereas inside, I'm getting grabbed by both. You'd notice with gravity generators that they have their width, height, and depth defined. These are defined based on the assumption that the control panel is either the front or the back, depending on your perspective, but it is either the front or the back. And that means that the field width is out to the left and right, the field height is up and down, and the field depth is forward and backwards. Even if you can't see this, if you've got the cube showing on your HUD, it'll be relatively easy to tell which way you're adjusting anyway. But it could be useful to know this in certain circumstances where you're trying to be particularly accurate. And like all sliders, you can control left click to enter in a specific value. One example where knowing these things is useful is what I've got set up on the other side of this. If we hop over here, you can see that I've got this tube and at the base of this tube are nine gravity generators. These gravity generators are all set to repel away and they're set to repel away this little escape pod which has artificial mass blocks on board. If we hop in this ship we can see that accelerating with its own thrusters is quite slow. I'm going backwards, forwards, it's not a quick way to get out of the launch tube. But if instead 
I turn on my artificial mass blocks, I'm going to be accelerated with the power of all of those gravity generators combined. And we can see the range that they have. If we go to our terminal, select this, show on HUD. You can see that I'm in the center of all of those nine gravity field gravity generators as my artificial gravity gen gravity marker on my HUD reads nine G's. So we'll turn those off so we can see what's happening. As we get launched down to the planet in three, two, one, and watch the speed go. I was ejected at 100 meters a second before I'd even left the launch tube. That is much, much faster than this little ship is capable of accelerating itself. You could use this for a drop pod, an escape pod like I just did. Or if you're feeling a little more inventive, you could even make this into a weapon with warheads. So if you've got missiles that you want to launch out from your ship that might have warheads on the tip, you could use gravity generators and artificial mass blocks to fire those instead of needing to build thrusters onto those missiles. You could argue that gravity generators aren't really necessary since we've got mag boots. And I don't have any great arguments against that. I prefer not having to walk on walls or not being able to walk on walls. I prefer just having the gravity generators. It's kind of nicer moving around in a gravitational field than it is stuck to the walls. If we turn off our gravity generator on the talisman, you can see that we do have the ability to walk around inside, but it seems strange to me to be able to do this and walk on the ceiling. It's kind of cool, but it does seem a bit strange and it can be a bit awkward moving around this way. So I prefer having a gen gravity generator on board ships and stations where I'm likely to be walking around. With both of these gravity generators showing on HUD, you can see that the large cube has 150 meter long sides to it. And the small one has its self fitted roughly to the side of the talisman. And the reason it's off to the side is because the gravity generator is actually centered right here where we can see that marker. So it's inefficient a placement if we're really struggling for energy. We would want it centered so that we can move those borders out equally from each side. And that's important to note is that the distances are centered about the gravity generator. We can't offset it in any way in the vanilla game. The other type of gravity generator are spherical gravity generators. And these are fairly self-explanatory. They have a radius that goes all the way out to 400 meters. They have the same acceleration adjustments that we can make with the standard gravity generator. But if we show this one on HUD, you'll see that the shape of the gravity field is roughly spherical. If we move right out, you can also see that with a 400 meter radius, the spherical gravity generator can make a much larger gravity field than the standard one can. As with the standard gravity generator, the spherical gravity generator adds to any gravi artificial gravitational force that's present. So if we zip into this field, we can see that we're slightly more than 1G and it will vary slightly as we move around because the spherical gravity generator is pulling us towards itself over there and it will adjust as I move around. So I should, while I'm still in this field from the talisman, fall downward, but I'm also going to be pulled towards the gravity generator there, towards that spherical one. And because it's a spherical gravity generator, you can sort of get into orbit with it. And if I'd lined this up properly, rather than being about to run straight into the talisman, oh, ouch, that hurt, then I would have been able to stay in orbit. Another fun thing we can do with spherical gravity generators is kind of cheat and create a ring habitat sort of thing. What I've got with this gravity generator is it's set to minus one G. That means that it's going to push me against this ring that's around it. So if I turn off my jetpack, I will 
walk around on this ring. Much like I had if I had mag boots on, except that I can jump. And if I step off the side, I will fall away. It's important to note what sort of gravity will affect what sort of blocks and items. Natural gravity or planetary gravity will affect all blocks and all items. Whereas artificial gravity, it'll affect your components, it'll affect your rocks, it'll affect your characters, but it won't affect standard blocks on your ships. You can see that with the talisman having a gravity generator on board, it's not actually moving. And the reason it's not moving is because none of those blocks are affected by the gravity generator on board. There's an exception though, and that's this block on the bottom of this little ship I'm sitting on. That block is an artificial mass block. If I turn that on, any gravity generator in the area will start to push on that. And the gravity generator I've got on top is currently set to zero meters per second per second acceleration. So it's doing nothing. I can increase this force in different directions and I can use this as a way to move my ship. This is what people are talking about when they're talking about a gravity drive. You can use artificial mass blocks to use the artificial generators to move your ship. And that's how I moved the shuttle we launched earlier. It had artificial mass blocks on board so the gravity gens could push it away. And I'm going to use the gravity drive on this ship to push it towards the planet so that we can have a look at another thing. Let's turn off our artificial mass block. Let's turn our gravity generator up to maximum. And you can see that while the gravity generator on the HUD is showing nine meters per second per second, our artificial gravity force on our astronaut is actually only 0.75 G. And that will gradually reduce as I move toward the planet. If we get down to the surface, which I'm going to have to hop out to prevent me from dying as I do so, since I am in survival, if we hop down to the surface, we can have a look at how much of a gravitational effect we can get out of an artificial generator down here. So if we pop a block and a battery and then pop a generator there, you can see that on the moon, we can actually still use an artificial gravity generator. It will produce half of the force that it's set to. We can see that on the gravity generator, we'll hop through here, it is set to its 1G setting, yet our artificial gravity on our astronaut is only at 0.5. If we take a trip down to the Earth-like planet, and even if we're on one of the tallest peaks, if we place down a battery and then a generator on top, the gravity generator won't produce anything. On Mars, when we place our gravity generator, again, it's nothing. I'm suspicious that Mars is the planet with the least gravitational force that it needs in order to stop artificial generators from working on the surface. Mars has a planetary gravity of 0.9 of Earth, so that's 0.9 Gs. And as we cross the threshold into Mars's gravitational field, you can see that our artificial generator drops from 1 to 0.9 straight away. The rest of the drops that happen are far more gradual. What this effect of planetary gravity on artificial gravity generators means is that you can't use a gravity drive in order to land on a planet, nor can you use gravity based weapons to fire on planets. You'll need to use thrusters. So that's a little bit of info on gravity generators, artificial mass blocks, and a few of the little things that I've done with gravity generators in my time playing. There are some other very clever people out there who have done some amazing things with gravity drives, such as Sage's gravity drive ship that could actually steer and fly entirely with gravity drives, as well as some of the designs I've seen on the workshop that shift your gravity field from horizontal to vertical to upside down so that your ship has multiple levels in it, but those levels are not all oriented in the same direction. And it's really cool to walk around those sorts of things. There's plenty of creativity you can have with gravity generators, even though they're very basic blocks. Hopefully this information has been enough so that you can start experimenting with these yourself and start producing some really cool toys. If you've got any of your own tips about using gravity generators or creating gravity weapons, toys, whatever, 
make sure you share them in the comments. I would love to hear them as I will hopefully eventually get to space in my survival maybe series and I might get around to using them then. As always, there are plenty more tutorials to come, so I'll see you then.